Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Let's Talk Assassin's Creed, your normal podcast for all things Assassin's Creed. In today's episode, as suggested by Six Keys from the server, we're going to be taking down a conspiracy rabbit hole. Well, that's how it started in the research. Interestingly, we're going to be looking at some real-life cults, or secret societies as they're also known, that could have inspired the real cults of Assassin's Creed. The ones that I will be bringing up will be the Templars, Isu, and Pythagoras, which is kind of a weird one. And I'll also be taking, there will be some very small spoilers for Valhalla, because it can't be helped, but I promise there'll be no DLC spoilers. There'll be mention of the main group in the DLC, but no spoilers to what they're doing. So I think that's all the notes out the way, except for I have a guest. It's been so long that I've been able to say that. I'm joined by James. Hi Declan, hi everyone. Really nice to be back. It's actually so glad to have someone back. It's been lonely. I need more, I need more guests. <laughs> Who was your last guest? Was it? Did, I heard I heard it crake a few weeks ago, did I not? Oh, it's been that long. Um, I think it was Visions of the Past. Ah, okay. I, I believe... Um, um, I should know this, it's my show. But a lot's been going on. Um, I think it was the Templar Ideology. No, that was me. I did the Mayan. Se- oh, no, it was the Mayan sequel with Bleeding Effects. Yes, because I did Templar Ideology, Deep Dives, and Assassin's Creed all by my lonesome. Ah, oh, shame. Well, I'm always happy to come on and chat about Assassin's Creed. I enjoyed our uh, chat a few months ago, and as I said, really nice to be back. And everyone's always welcome. I've got a few surprise guests in the works. But I can't say more. <laughs> oh, you big tease. <laughs> I love teasing. <laughs> That's one of the guests that um, I need to announce in a few weeks probably will drop a lot of hats. Drop my heart when said yes. Oh, yes. I think I know who it is, but I'm not saying a word. <laughs> so let's jump in, shall we? Let's do it. So... The first cult slash secret society that I want to talk about is technically not a secret society or a cult in the real world, but they are a cult secret society in Assassin's Creed, by sort of. So let's go in first. Isu. And Ancient Aliens. Now, technically, Ancient Aliens is a worldwide belief that aliens came and they built toilet pyramids, they used tools. Apparently there's a lot of evidence in Church of the Gods where tools from archaeological texts could have been man-made from beings light years ahead or people arriving on dragons that are meant to be represent spaceships and stuff like that, which you take with a pinch of salt, obviously, but it's fun to believe that ancient aliens could have inspired the Isu. What would your take be on that, James? It, it kind of connects perfectly, doesn't it? You know, um, the, the, the ancient aliens, or sometimes you see it as uh, ancient astronauts, is the idea that, that early humans or pre-modern, or even pre-ancient societies were able to build things, like you said, pyramids, Stonehenge, that, that were just not possible with the technology of the time. So somebody or something gave them a helping hand, um, which kind of connects with the idea that those few Isu that survived the human Isu war, maybe they did give humans, you know, uh, a bit more of their advanced knowledge and help them establish themselves as a, a survivor society. So you can see the parallels there between beings from another planet, helping out early humans, but also the Isu within the Assassin's Creed universe, helping out humans after the, uh, the Great Catastrophe. During the research for Ancient Aliens, I did find some weird texts about stones with perfect holes in them that look like a laser drill, or vehicles described by chariots, like gods driven, as the book kind of does suggest, they could also represent pieces of Eden. If a rock has a perfect laser cut circle, which I'm pretty sure, seeing how some the East Island statues were moved by the indigenous people, which actually looks cool, mm, it could have been possible for prehistoric people to have made that circle. It could have been possible, but it's also cool to believe that Isu could have helped with that in the Assassin's Creed universe. It, it's a it's a rich by setting the 
the the history up in that way. You've got such a rich kind of um, a rich vein that you can mine. You know any ancient structure. We talked about Stonehenge, like we see in Valhalla, um, the pyramids and so on. Um, it's it's great because there's so many little threads you can draw in and across the whole world, like um, the Nazca lines down in uh, South America. Another example, you know, in the Assassin's Creed world, were these created by the Isu? Were they Isu art? You know, how did humans create such vast um, drawings in the desert floor uh, hundreds or thousands of years ago? I've seen the Nazca lines; are pretty amazing. Like. Mm. Oh, it's incredible. How, how I mean, and, and being realistic from it, how on earth did they plan that and mark that out and, and generate it and get those lines so straight? It's incredible. It really is incredible. Because the Isu built it, that's the answer. The Isu built it. <laughs> <laughs> the humans had no part. <laughs> it, it's incredible, but at the same time, prehistoric, well, prehistoric, uh, ancient humans figured out the world was round. They figured out gravity. You know, without fancy equipment, if you get out, if you drop a bowling ball and a feather, it's going to fall the same. Mm, yeah. it, um, astronomy was discovered by ancient sailors using weird compasses to map the stars. So it's possible for someone to map the position of the sun and lines to create shadows, see how far they have to go. So there is a lot of possibilities that humans could have done this, but it's great if you get the cultural appreciation right. To twist it that Isu did it. As I've always said with the Mayan prophecy of 2012, this was a human prophecy, but could the Isu have also helped with the prophecy? And it, it was what? just perfect timing, wasn't it? With because um, the game was released that year, was it? Was it released in October of that year? So they just got everything in terms of development and the timelines just right to say, actually, this this kind of piece of pop history um, is actually connected to our universe that we have created and the Isu. I think someone told me that Desmond Miles' journey in AC1 starts in September 2012. Oh, that's each right. each game Yes, all follows, the events, yes. And then it ends at 2012. So it's as if his journey was linear through the year which is mm. creepy why they did that. Brilliant planning. I, well, I don't know whether they planned it like that originally in, in 2007 when they were when they were making uh, Assassin's Creed 1, but it worked out well, didn't it, over the next five years? I, I tell you about the word. I bet somebody pretty planned it. Mm. I would have. I totally would have planned that. <laughs> it's the greatest mystery-solving puzzle for a game ever. Oh, definitely. Great, great but setup. Great payoff. I think to, to this day they should have released the game actually on 2012. 21st of December, you think, should have been the, the sale date, yeah. Yeah, yeah for Assassin's Creed. Imagine that, Assassin's Creed 3. You complete it and it's like, Desmond saves the world. Happy and then Christmas. You wake up, <laughs> and then you wake up 22nd, like, Desmond did it. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a very, that would have been a meta joke right up there with some of the uh, sort of the Easter eggs and other bits of code they've been hiding with the Valhalla launch, you know. That'd have been great. I think that would have made me die of laughter. That just complete the game, wake up, we'll live because of Desmond. Not legitly, but we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next one before I ask if you've got any, because I'll save my best two for last, is Freemasons. Have you heard much about these guys? I've heard of them. I think, like a lot of people, you, you kind of know that they exist. And that they are a, what would you call them? A private membership group, if you were being sort of neutral? I don't really know. It's it's very strange, but I don't really know the details about them. Well, in research, I found out, and this is just a, um, a little bit of who, what they believe in. I'm not going to go for who, they're all history because it's very long. I... I, for scientific reasons for the show, I've read everything about them and it's great in detail. But why I want to focus on is the Freemasons believe in a supreme being and in the mort mortality of the soul. The teachings of Freemasonry enjoy morality, charity, and obedience to the law of the land. Kind of sticks out as the Templars because law of the land could be interpreted to order, which is what the Templars believe. Absolutely. 
supreme being well since arthur arthur no not arthur um Al alfred valhalla G uh, god or the religious deity of the time um morality and charity uh, i don't know if his temples have ever been charitable but morality yes because they always try even though their actions are a bit twisted and sometimes they're always trying the best for you know, humans. Just I was just thinking when you when you said about have, have the Templars ever been charitable? I am currently just just two days ago started playing Rogue for the first time and they're presenting the Templars as very much a a supportive organization for the people. Now of course I haven't finished the game yet, so I don't know where the story's gonna go and what the real truth is. But certainly what I've seen so far in the first few hours of, of um of story is that they are actually looking out for the people because they want peace. They don't want trouble. Um, they want to rule, I would say, <clears throat> in a uh, in a fair but perhaps firm way. So yeah, I could see that map that connecting. I uh, that's my idea. I did have the encyclopedia. The encyclopedia I've got out. And I do think there was some um, mood stuff that they create for humans to understand child's moods and all that. So. I never I overlooked that as being a charitable action, but that could be a bit of a charity, you know, helping people understand each other. Which is kinda of spooky. Absolutely. Mind control. So the Freemasons are are also full of wealthy people and we cannot argue that the Templars are not the wealthiest people around in the universe. Abstergo is the biggest company around. It's got <laughs> ties to everything. Yep. They've got lots of fingers and lots of Templar pies. Oh, it's making me hungry. <laughs> I think the other thing that I connected with the Templars, other than um, the Freemasons, is one that I believe Assassin's Creed 1 missed the mark with, and I'll always say that. Templar Knights and the Hunt for the Holy Grail. It is the greatest urban legend of its time that the Crusade was only spawned so they could get the um, goblet. So this is the thing I was surprised about Valhalla, bearing in mind that there are so many myths in Britain connecting Arthur to the Holy Grail and Tintagel and um, Glastonbury and so on. It's not present in the game. And I, I kind of thought it would be because it's kind of an obvious connection that the, the Holy Grail would be an Isu artifact that was buried somewhere in England um, with a story or a myth that would connect it to Arthur, Excalibur's in there, of course. But I was really surprised that, um, bearing in mind how much Valhalla includes references to Isu, lots of lore, lots of connections between um, the ancient history, the history within the game, and then the modern day, I was so surprised that, that the Holy Grail wasn't in there. Um, but yeah, in, in AC1, that would have been perfect time, perfect pickings to have a, a, a connection like that or a historical artifact like that. I do remember in the very opening scene of AC1, the Templars are going after the Ark of Covenant. Yes. Which is also a rumored artifact they hunted because the Ark of Covenant and the Holy Grail were all, well, present when Jesus was around. And I know Jesus is human who had pieces of Eden in AC law, so these would make sense. And I think, as you said with Valhalla, it would have made more logic sense for Eivor to do a mission, not to find the um, the goblet, but to do a mission where it leaves England shores as she tries to get out of the Temple of Zand, and that's why it lost its way and ended up in Jerusalem. Yeah. And then you yeah. could say that the Temple has found records of this, that it was stolen by a rogue Templar agent in Viking time, shipped from England, traded, blah, blah, blah. We still, you know, we still have another DLC. We could still have a story where Eivor finds it and maybe um, Hytham takes it back to the Middle East with him when he returns to the Hidden Ones, you know? Oh, Who, knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> that would be so perfect. And it'd be a great tie because then we'll know why the Crusades of Richard Lionheart was happening. They were looking for pieces of Eden. Yeah, and Alfred finds one... out that it's gone, and, and, you know, 200 years later, or 150 years later, yeah, Richard the Lionheart says, right, I'm going to go and get it back for the Templars, you know, for the for the, um, for the the nice Templar. So, yeah. And uh, who knows? Hey, look, oh, actually, there's, there's, is there going to be a third DLC? Have I been keeping yeah. up to date with the news? Maybe not. 
uh, there is the next one is, is there is a third one um it's uh, a low key theme dlc so all i'm going to say to people low key theme uh, access the anime solved it freaking amazing people them what oh of course that was the the hidden audio yes i'm i'm up to date now yeah yeah the hidden audio message that was in the uh, community update which i have to say to everyone listening how on God's green earth, did people figure that out? <laughs> I watched it six times, and I can't hear this audio. I've even put headphones into full blast. How you solved it is a miracle, who would and think, I have your hey, Who would think to run an audio from a YouTube stream through a spectrum analyzer? But it was a red, wasn't it? A redditor that that did it first, and then Access the Animus took that as a as a, a nugget of information, and then did more research and, and uncovered the full picture but it is i mean i think nowadays assassin's creed is just the developers versus access the animus isn't it <laughs> well they did say in a tweet um i can't remember the full tweet someone um put what would happen if access the animus didn't solve it and apparently they had a clue to put the trailer back out with two eye emojis and then a yes. sound emoji yes that was the and community I was like, developer i can't remember her name but yes yeah, she did she said we did have a, a backup plan if no, if nobody had uh clocked the uh, the hint that was interest very interesting i was like jesus christ i didn't even clock it and i listened to death metal so i always got my music piled up right to the max so i suddenly hear some weird creepy code i think i think the lesson for you and me is there are some very very clever people out there <laughs> in in the yes. ac community listening out for these clues. absolutely same same so have you uncovered any secret cults or societies um, I haven't uncovered any secret cult society, societies, but I'm re- I've been really interested in in what you were talking. We were talking about this, weren't we, a few days ago via um, via Discord chat about the cults you wanted to discuss. I tell you one thing I did do this week, which I, I really enjoyed, and it's a little bit related, but a little bit um, off topic. But um, I fired up Brotherhood for the first time in in a few months, and I went and did one of the uh, Romulus tomb um, locations. And I have no idea if the uh, the cult of Romulus is, was a real historical cult, whether it was just made up for for Brotherhood. But that, going through those huge um, parkour puzzles and challenges is just fantastic. And I really, really miss that. Well, technically, he never had a cult, but Romulus did actually earn a cult following because he is the father of Rome. So True. And he did apparently um, quite a couple, of, which later became assimilated with the cult of Quinris. But uh, I don't know what I couldn't find any information on the cult of Quinris. Mm. Okay, I, I tried my hardest, but no. Quinris is an early god of the Roman state in Augustus Rome. Quinris was also an epithet of Janus as Janus Quirinus. Ah, understood. So okay, it, he was the farmer father of Rome. Mm. Um, and it was well, a legendary founder and um, one of the twin sons of Mars. So the cult of Romulus in Brotherhood isn't far from truth because there was a cult following up Romulus because of his legendary status as being, as I'm dubbing him, the father of Rome. Yeah. The greatest city of the time. But I wonder, does that have, as you've suggested with the other topics, does that have an Isu connection? I would guess not. That's just a, an, you know, within the human history, human period of history cult. I'm interested in the, actually, one thing I will, I will, because you have this on your list of topics, um, the cult of Pythagoras. What did you find out about them? Oh, this one's a juicy one. <laughs> juicy, juicy, juicy. Because I'll tell um, you, all I know is he had something to do with maths. And we, we met him in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And depending on the on the uh, the choices you made, you uh, we can do spoilers for Odyssey now. It's been out for, for two and a half, nearly three years. Um, <laughs> depending on the choices you made, <clears throat> he either gave you the staff peacefully or you had to fight this very, very old man in Atlantis to get the staff from him. I did it peacefully. I didn't want to beat an old man up. I felt wrong. Well, I'll tell you, the first time I played it, I ended up fighting him. And it was only on a, on a subsequent playthrough. And I don't, I must admit, I didn't even remember there were dialogue choices, but there are. And I must have chosen different options because this time he basically said, okay, I've had enough. Here's, here's the staff. And uh, we carried on peacefully. So, yeah, I didn't even realize there were two choices there until uh, some many hundreds of hours later. 
I I just kind of pressed the first option. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna lie and say. Understood. I fought a for I fought for it. I thought it was gonna be juicy. No, I just clicked the first one up for the best. Next next finish. Yeah, makes sense. Next finish. I was I was literally tied on the point because I like Odyssey, but as I've always said to people, I just don't like the sailing. Oh, understood. Understood. Sailing in Assassin's Creed, I look, I don't mind it in Black Flag, but I'm not a fan of just open world driving. I like stuff to do, and mm. I felt sometimes with Black Flag and Odyssey, I spent more time on what I do now. It's kind of boring. <laughs> you didn't enjoy Barnabas uh, shouting out for salvage every minute? No. <laughs> you not know how annoying just like, you go going around and it's like, salvage, Captain! What? 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 Where? Yeah. Oh, great. Sorry, oh. we've got a way off topic, but hey, you know me, I'm happy to talk about Odyssey for as long as you like. I think the worst one, I know it's off topic, but... um. Uh, I was like falling asleep playing Odyssey because I was like, a long night, and I was into the wind, the background music. I forgot how low my headphones were, and all of a sudden it was a like, salvage captain. Holy crap! Brilliant. Awake! Yep. I'm awake. Right, Pythagorism. Yes. Here's my dyslexia playing up, guys. So Pythagorism was um actually first stated in the Pythagorean community in Croton, Italy. And it's essentially a cult following around Mars. Um, he was that well known for being a founder of Mars that people just followed him. They wanted to learn more about his teachings because back in them days with Greek scholars and Greek poets, they were the epiphany. People would listen to them, listen to the stories, the followings, the teachings, and kind of led some really cool stuff in modern day. But in Assassin's Creed, his followers got a bit to antsy because of his peace of Eden knowledge and they may have accidentally formed the cult of um, the Order of Ancients. So there is a bit of a liberty that Assassin's Creed has taken but the cult of Pythagoras of math and myths is a legit group of people that just followed him because well they just loved his teachings. It's fascinating <laughs> isn't it? It's fascinating that they found his mathematical studies his geometry studies um so interesting that they they kind of followed him worshipped him it's uh it's interesting i think what struck me as most interesting is that it makes sense for him to have a cult because back in them days everything was based on the work of gods if it rained the gods did it if your house caught on fire gods did it but mm. when a man comes along and gives you science where the sun sets when the stars rise, it kind of makes you feel like a man's challenging God, which is kind of epic. It's, you would follow a man that's challenging God. When you say, Zeus struck my house with lightning, and he says, no, your house had a bit of metal that attracted lightning, you're challenging Zeus. And I think people probably did hope to God that as he challenged the gods of his science, they would strike him down. I tell you what I find interesting is, just thinking this through as you were speaking, um, could his relationship with his followers have been less mythical and just simply more of teacher-student? No, no different to maybe, again, as we said earlier in the episode, um, the early Isu, or the Isu that survived helping humans rebuild and recover after the war. You know, we will teach you everything we have learned so that you can continue after us. I, I truly believe that um, the cult of Order of Ancients did originate from his teaching, so he probably did teach them the game about Isu artifacts, the power they hold, and the future they can bring. And it was just basic knowledge that they taught, like a teacher, as you said, but they took it out to be something more. They saw more in it, more power, more wealth, a way to change the world. But they kind of got corrupted mm. in the process, mm. which is not very good. <laughs> That's understatement. So, do you want to know the last one I found? Oh, God, yes. This one, I will admit, guys, blew me away. Children of Danu, Masas Grivala, Hola, is actually 100% real. Um, as, like the Freemasons, there is a legit mythological genealogy and heritage for the children of Danu. Now, technically, they're not called the children of Danu. Uh, I think I'm just... Is my podcast still running? 
I can hear you fine, Declan. Yeah, carry on, mate. Sorry, my computer just froze people. Oh, um, no. <laughs> I broke it. Technically, and this is coming from the ones who came before, um, an article that they've written and I found. So thank you to uh, Ashley Buckley, who wrote it and, well, edited it, written by Lauren, Lauren Harris and called, uh, let me actually read through it, which is nice of him. So big shout out to them lot. And I will post it soon, or if I've not already posted on Twitter, but they do talk about the Tuatha de Danann, which translates roughly as the people of the goddess Duna, du, Danu. I'm getting tongue tied here. And I, the Irish pronunciation that, is is not not easy. So uh, you know, I think you're fine. <laughs> as it, it should be easy. My name's Gaelic. Good point. <laughs> and I can pronounce it well. People <laughs> do spell it wrong, but I can pronounce it fine. So the reason why I think this is interesting and it blew me away is. Freemasons are grounded. You can't stretch them. Templars, grounded, you can't stretch them, and so on. But the goddess of Danu has no surviving myths or legends in medieval Irish texts. This means that even though they, well, technically did sometimes assume it to be alternative Anu, who is another Irish goddess, it's kind of possible that even though there's a heritage, a cult following, You've got unlimited freedom. So this is a this is the only legit cult I will say that could have inspired the DLC. Because there's so much freedom that you cannot say that didn't happen because there's no surviving texts. If that, that makes sense. That's perfect for for well, it's perfect for a video game and it's perfect for a DLC where as we saw with, with Origins and with Odyssey, where one of the DLCs kind of starts to stretch a little bit more into myth. Um, it's perfect if there's just a little thread of realism, but then you can build whatever myth and story around it. Uh, my, my main question for you, though, is what have you found out about werewolves? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't get me started on werewolves. <laughs> I love me some werewolves. Um, I did actually do a really good... Um, uh, a really good podcast on werewolves of Valhalla. Um, because of the Wells of Asori, which was a kingdom of an early medieval Irish kingdom, which is where the legend of Wells first originated from. Interesting. It's an um. There's a lot of Irish and Norse mythology texts, but there's a lot about um. Oh, I can't remember. But there is a lot. There's a uh, Saint Patrick who apparently came across some Wells in his. Well, a cult that jeered him and he uh, put, asked God to punish the... Uh, they jeered him for his preaching of Christianity in the country. So he prayed to God to punish them. And by punishing them, he begged God to change them to wolves for a period. And they have to roam through the woods feeding upon the same food as wolves. But they are literally worse than wolves. So there is one text from there that I assumed they would follow. There's people who would dress up as wolf clothing and pretend to be werewolves, just like berserkers. So there is a lot of real cultish star mythology around werewolves. But I doubt they were inspired by Assassin's Creed because <laughs> one of my dreams for Valhalla's... Like, don't get me wrong, Valhalla's werewolves are grounded really well, mm. but they're not grounded in the way I wanted them, so I am slightly disappointed. How far do you think that the game can take a piece of myth and stretch it because the more you stretch it in the game, sometimes the more fun it can be, but it still needs, there's no magic in Assassin's Creed. So how did you, how, when, when we were, wait, you, have you finished Wrath of the Druids? I have done. Okay. So, and we've got to be careful about spoilers. I guess we have to be careful about spoilers here. Maybe a spoiler warning. Um, how did you interpret the werewolves? Is it just a fever dream? Is it just mushrooms? Is it the it's the the sort of poison gas that the um, the druids are making? This one actually came up in another conversation, and it has to this day, and I will defend it, the best way of grounding mythology in the game so far. That is a there bold is, statement. I'm I'm ready to listen. I, that is bold. The, it is bold, and people may <laughs> object, and that is fine. But in one of the cult of da children of Danu missions, you find a letter, 
and the letter has precise ingredients, oh, which is why I yes, think it's so yes. grounded. Precise ingredients that play on your fear, that they throw into a fire. You need, um, I think you need, what was it you needed? You need like, uh, it's going to be mushrooms, isn't it? Always, <laughs> yeah. The answer is always mushrooms in, in Valhalla. Mm-hmm. There's mushrooms, tree bark, and something else that you put into a fire. It creates a green mist that goes into people's minds. This right. is the most grounded thing because it's not saying magic. It's legit a <laughs> potion. It's it's basically a how-to trip mm, list. Yeah. That, that's what it was. It was basically how do you cause people to trip. And it's also so grounded because it doesn't specify werewolves it specifies seeps into the man's mind which means then if you are feeling i don't know blue one day and you are terrified of vampires there's nothing saying that this mist couldn't make vampires and for evil it was werewolves because of indeed her time in that place, I think she was learning about the werewolves. Do you, do you, I, I, I understood then from what you've said that it would it would pull out her kind of um, her lingering fear from her attack when she was a child. Do you remember right at the start of the game? Um, that is actually a great interpretation of a wolf because someone did tell me that the green mist changes wolves into werewolves. Mm. So mm. it could be the fear of being attacked by a wolf and slight spoiler for Valhalla, but Harvey's memory as well. He always feared wolves. Oh yes, of course. Oh, so like there, there is so <laughs> there is so much story and so much lore in Valhalla. I've only played it through once. That I've forgotten those parts in <laughs> in the mythical realms as well. Of course, yeah, it all connects. I mean, you have to say that the the, the writers did an amazing job of bringing all these threads together and finding all of these sort of mirror images in the different stories. It really is fantastic. But you can see why I say that Valhalla's Werewolves has the best grounding method ever, because there's one, a how-to list that doesn't explain mm-hmm. what she's seeing, but explains how it works. But then there's also inherent memories of her fears of wolves from being attacked and Harvey, yeah. which would then make Werewolves. And as to answer your question, how far they can stretch the myth, not very far. You have to follow the myth exactly, but do not rely on it was an Isu. That's all I would say. Do not rely on just it was an Isu. Sherlock Holmes once proudly stated, and I'm going to quickly pull up the quote because it's my favourite quote in history. Uh, where's the quote gone? Uh, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Uh, he didn't say uh, the when... Isu, did, it? did he? No, oh, he, oh, okay. <laughs> um, he used to say... When you've eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. This is actually perfect for Assassin's Creed mythology, because if your ancestor found a dinosaur T-Rex skull, and they say it's a dragon, it's a dragon. If, yeah. if you yeah. rem- remove the impossible to them, and their memory, the impossible is this is not a dinosaur, because it's impossible for them to think of that, whatever remains, however improbable, has to be the truth. So if that human finds a dragon, well, a dinosaur, it's impossible for them to think of prehistoric beasts like dinosaurs. So they think dragons, their beliefs. So then that's what's left, and that has to be the truth, because that's how memories work. Yeah. Yeah, and that went off into a tangent, didn't it? <laughs> I think that's what this episode is about, the cults of Assassin's Creed, you know? It's it's interesting to think about all of these uh, little little theories and myths and and see how they connect and what they can be used for and can we revisit them you know um that's, that was another question i was going to ask you so do you think there are cults we could return to in future games i think every cult we've discussed in here could be returned to but i think cults i've not researched could be followed as well especially mythological cults or cults with superstitions because what I've started to realise is we're playing a memory, not time travel. And if somebody remembers something some way, then it happened. That's how a memory works. If you see a shadow at the corner of your eye that was a car, but you believed it was a ghost, when you revisit that memory, you saw a ghost. You don't see the shadow of a car, yeah. you saw a ghost. Yeah, human memory is um, 
is not perfect, not at all. Mm. It, it can be very easily influenced. And um, I mean, pe- you can have memories, you can implant memories in people's minds if you uh, tell them the same thing, you know, uh, or a, a different story, but you keep it consistent. So yes, hu- human human brains are, um, well, made by the EC, so flexible, very flexible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just kind of believe that if there's any cult out there that believes fantasy, believe, that worships the EC as gods, and has fantasy, it's canon because of memory. Mm. In legit mm. fact, if someone believed that someone had an Isu gun, because I've seen Isus use guns before in a memory, and it shot somebody and they killed them, they could say that was a magic wand that shot magic. In that memory, it will be a magic wand that shot magic. It wasn't, it was legitly something else. But you've got to understand that primitive memory, the science is magic. And that's why I'm always going to say that magic and science's creed and fantasy works because it's not time travel, it's a memory, and it's how something mem- remembered. Absolutely. And as long as it can be explained either in-game, in dialogue, or in a database entry, or something, as long as it can be explained that it is technology, very advanced technology, then it's fine. Exactly. If you went to a cave bound with a lighter and you turned the lighter on, They'll think you're a god with fire in your hands. Absolutely. When you're not, you've just got a lighter. Absolutely. And that's why I'm always loving mythology in Assassin's Creed and why I want to see more cults that have mythology because it'd be fun to see how they could experiment with it. Indeed. And as you say, they did a really nice job with Wrath of the Druids. I, I, Wrath of the Druids sort of didn't really advance the main stories, but as a, as, a, as a self-contained side story, I thought it was excellent. I had a great time. Um, it was enjoyable hold, hunting down the uh, children of Danu. It was enjoyable sort of doing the trading loop. It was great doing those, should we call them mythical boss fights? Something like yes. that. Um, yeah. Although I did notice, I'm, not, I'm sure other people have noticed this, but uh, I can't, you see, we've spoken about so many topics. We may have already spoken about this, but the wolves or the werewolves attack animations they look just like the cyclopes from odyssey to me how they charge across and, and swing their arms and so on it looks to me like they, they may have borrowed the animations from them but i need to replay those parts of odyssey to see if i'm actually right or not they probably have and as i always said to people it doesn't matter if a game borrows oh God, no. or not at all not at all twists um mechanics because at the end of the day it's called the magic of video games you don't want to think about it too much if the borrowed Cyclops animations, I think it's perfect because it's still funky to have a werewolf for a rock at you. Absolutely. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, it, it is. It is hilarious. I was, I was doing quite well with them uh, using my favoured build, which is dual spears, built for speed. Um, but then when I realised I needed to start using the um, sickles to get the achievement and I switched to using sickles, oh my word, it was taking so long to beat these people, these, these werewolves and these uh, these various targets. I really missed my spears. Oh, um, I, I, I'd never got a screenshot of this, I'm so good. But I was doing a post box mission, as I'm going to call them, and it sent me to a cult of Danu and it's like, kill all these targets, no one necessarily kills, take no damage, that sort of jazz. Yes. So. I climbed on a rock and I was trying to assassinate folk and I saw a werewolf and I thought it's impossible to assassinate one but I'm going to try. Did you? And it did. Awesome. I, That's my, fantastic. I had guaranteed assassination on because everyone keeps talking about it so I put it on and I air assassinated a werewolf. It was so weird. Brilliant. If only you'd been recording. That is fantastic. <laughs> I failed the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> ah, apparently matter. he was. Doesn't matter. Apparently that was an unnecessary kill. I think. Like, really? It's, it's a werewolf. Well. It's always necessary. Absolutely. You chomp me. Absolutely. You can't tame them, so you might as well uh, might as well get rid of them. It's not Pokemon. You see, now at that point, I have to admit I know nothing about Pokemon, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'm not going down that road at all. Right. So I think this is all we actually do have time for tonight. Sadly, because we could talk a lot more oh, about I, I would, I would be happy to chat forever, but <laughs> as you said, hey, we're up to 40 minutes already. I know. Um, before we go, I do want to let everyone know that the YouTube project is still going along, but I'm changing tactics because I've come late in the game to these episodes. 
I'm going to find it hard to always play catch up. So YouTube is not going to be a hosting platform. Instead, it's going to be an archive platform where every episode will be eventually archived on there. So if you do spend a lot of time with YouTube music and have YouTube premium, you will have them on there for you to listen to. But they may not always be caught up with um, the show because it's kind of, we do 10 a week, that's eight weeks. And in eight weeks, that's eight episodes already done. So I've got a lot on my plate, but everything will be updated eventually. So it's an archive, everything on there. And by Sunday, um, I should have all the first 10 episodes live for you. So I hope you enjoy them. And if you want to be on the show, remember, always reach out to Twitter or email. AC Let's Talk and email Assassin's Creed Let's Talk at gmail.com. Uh, thanks for James for joining again. Uh, no problem. It's been great. I'm always going to have you on board no matter what. Well, we've, we, 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 we did discuss a, a future episode idea, didn't we, a few days ago, which I'm actually I'm really looking forward to, to getting your, uh, your, your opinions and your viewpoint. So I'm looking forward to that. I think, we, I think we've got two coming oh up. Oh, my word. Discuss. You're setting me even more homework. Okay, I, I need to get on this. <laughs> maybe maybe we should have you as a permanent host. Oh, no. <laughs> permanent recurring guest. Always happy to come and chat. Always. So thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all next week. See you all soon.